You're listening to Victory Apostolic in Winsboro, Louisiana. Thanks for tuning in. Amen. The book of 1 Corinthians 3. Now let's begin with verse 4. 1 Corinthians 3, verse 4. For while one saith, I am of Paul, and another, I am Apollos, are you not carnal? Who then is Paul? And who is Apollos? But ministers by whom ye believe, even as the Lord gave to every man. I have planted Apollos, watered, but God gave the increase. So then he that planteth anything, neither he that watereth, but God that giveth the increase. God gives the increase. Now he that planteth and he that watereth are one, and every man shall receive. You're going to get your reward. His own reward according to his own labor. Praise the Lord. I, I, I'm going to try my best to preach. The Lord has just stirred my heart so strongly. And I hope that I can bless somebody, and I want to bless this church. Amen. I want to preach tonight. We're growing. I want to preach tonight. We're growing. Would you say, God bless the word? In the name of Jesus, God. In the name of Jesus, God, help me tonight. God, let me deliver what you give me, Lord. God, I pray that it, God, come across, Lord, be a blessing to somebody, God, who's here, but who may be watching, God, like you've already blessed. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, would you give the Lord a hand clap of praise? You may be seated in the name of the Lord. Thank you for answered prayers. Thank you for bringing Connor Wimberly home. Praise God. I'm telling you, Apollos watered it, but God made it grow. We forget that sometimes. I watered it. I can do this. I can help you. I can do this for you. It doesn't matter what you do for me or I do for you. If God's not in it, it's not going to work. I can water it, but God can make it grow. So neither he who plants nor he who waters is anything. Amen. We're nothing but God who makes things grow. The man who plants and the man who waters has one purpose. And each will be rewarded according to his own labor. Praise the Lord. For we are God's fellow workers. You are God's field. Could I tell you, you are God's field. God's building. By the grace God has given me. I laid the foundation as a builder in someone else's building. But each one needs to be careful how we build, for no one can lay any foundation other than one who already laid it, Jesus Christ. Praise God. It don't matter what we do at this place. And that has been my, my thing since I have been it as, as a man of God or a pastor or anything. I say, God, you have to be the foundation. And so by uh, 2 Peter 3, if you'll uh, turn there quickly, 2 Peter 3, in verse 8, But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. The Lord is not slack. He is not slack. We might be slack, but He is not slack. Watch this, concerning His promises. Well, I promise you I'll do this. I'll promise to do this. I'll promise to do We promise, promise, promise. Bake a pie, eat a pie. You know, whatever it may be. And break promises. But the Lord is not slack concerning His promise. As some men count slackness. But is long-suffering to us, Ward. Not willing that any should perish. But that all should come to repentance. 
But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night. It's going to catch somebody. God help us not to get caught. Please hear what pastor is preaching here tonight. Please hear what I'm saying. I don't want to hurt anybody's feelings. But I'm going to tell you something. There's going to be some people caught with their high-minded, holier-than-thou spirit. It doesn't matter. I don't give a flip about your dress. Now, I'm not saying I don't, that we don't preach this. We do. We, you, a man and a woman knows how to dress. But you don't use that to butcher somebody because of you. You are not to justify and to judge anybody. And I'm going to tell you something. More people are going to be lost because of their judgmental spirit of why they don't do it and they do. I, I'm really tired of it. The, the thief, he's going to catch us like... Now, I, I know what the spirit already is feeling. is like, oh, he's back in... No, I'm not. I believe... Everything about how we're supposed to live and dress. It's ex- I, I haven't dropped that. But I'm saying that spirit behind it. If you think there's all it is to it, it you got a serious problem. Because your attitude, your spirit, your high-minded self that you don't get along with people and won't, it's going to hurt you and cost you. He said the day will come, the Lord will come as a thief of the knife. God help me not to be that way. I got to be an example. But I got I, I to gotta be the right example. Please hear me. I'm delivering my soul tonight. Amen. I want to have the right spirit. God, let me have the right spirit. I'm tired of the spirits. Uh, pastor is ready to just change the culture a little bit. I'm not changing the doctrine. But I'm telling you what. I, I don't care. I've said it Sunday. If the soup's cold, who cares? Don't fuss about it. Don't butcher somebody about it. As a young man growing up, I can remember playing the bass guitar. And I can remember choir directors. And I appreciate what they were doing. I appreciate music leaders and what they were doing. But if you didn't get it right, let's stomp their foot and fuss at you and all of that. And have a bad spirit. Hush, be quiet and all. I don't like that. I don't like that. Amen. This is for the glory of God. Amen. I, I've been around enough people that, I, 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 and, and, that, that I could, I've seen a different. Type of individual. Oh, that's not right. Hey, let's see if we can get this right. Can we not change our approach and our attitude? Can we not be sweeter? Just because somebody don't do it your way, do you have to get mad about it and shut everything down? That's the wrong spirit. I hope I'm preaching okay tonight. It's preference. If you don't like it, then everybody else is not supposed to like it. Hey, Amen. That's not the Bible. Jesus would not do that. If that would have been the case, he would have shut the Samaritan woman down at the well. Amen. In the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with the fervent heat. The earth also and the works there that are therein shall be burned up. Seeing then at all times things shall be dissolved, that matter persons ought you be in holy conversation godliness. Hey, we must be in a holy conversation. We must be godly. I believe that. Amen. I I do believe that. Looking for and hasting into the coming of the day of God, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. It's talking about stuff I don't even want to talk about. I don't even want to be a part of that. Nevertheless, we according to His promise look for new heavens and a new earth. Wherein dwelleth righteousness. Wherefore, beloved, seeing that ye look for such things, be diligent that ye may be found of him in peace. Come on, peace. We got to have peace. Amen. Without spot and without blameless. Praise the Lord. I, I, I'm tired of that stuff where it's too. It's like, well, I can't help it. That's just the way I am. No. It's not who you are. It's who you got on the inside of you. Well, I've seen people get mad, you know, and stuff like that. Stomp their little foot and be be ugly. That's not not you. It's God on the inside of you. An account that the long-suffering of the Lord is salvation, even as our beloved brother Paul, also according to the wisdom given unto the, hath written unto you, and also his epistles speaking in them of things in which are some things hard to be understood which they that are unlearned and stable rest 
as they do also the other scriptures to their own destruction. You therefore, beloved, seeing you know these things before, be aware, lest ye also being led away with the error of the wicked. Amen. Fall from your own steadfastness. Praise the Lord. But watch this. You're growing. We're growing. It said, but grow in grace. Grow in grace. And in the knowledge, not of what you think in your preference or how you think it ought to be or what everybody else is doing. Old school, any school, what school? I don't care. But it said grow in grace for the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I want to grow in Jesus. I've said this many times and I'll say it again. This is not a religion. It's a relationship. It's your relationship with God. Amen. Praise the Lord. And and so it says, To Him be glory both now and forever. Amen. Everybody say amen. Amen. It's not time to leave. Hang on. Praise the Lord. As I left home Sunday night, and I got home and I began to pray. I'm just going to be honest with you. I'm being transparent here. I, I burn for this church. I preached my heart and soul out last Sunday about preparing for something greater. And I began to come home and the devil... You may say, oh, Brother David, you're the pastor, you're the man of God, you preach the great message and everything, but I'm still human. And I began to beat myself up. I asked myself, not too many times this has happened, but it happened Sunday night. And I said, God, why did things have to happen with my dad? I didn't want this. I wanted this, but what I mean is, at that time, I didn't want it then. I thought that he would be healed, come right back, and I would just be his assistant and just help him continue with this. And his death was untimely, and it thrust me into pastorship, and I I, I was made, you know, uh, into something that I just didn't know what to expect. I had to deal with situations that, as a young man, I didn't know that I'd ever have to deal with, or situations, or events, or dealing with some people Things that a young man and his family should never have dealt with. And I I began to question things. Well, Lord, maybe it's my fault. Maybe I did make some mistakes. You know, I I, I know that a great opportunity came at the time. And I know Sister Barbara and they were a part of this. My family, my uncle had opened up a business. And boy, it looked like a great exit from the school system because I said this is an opportunity and I was feeling my calling and I, I mean I was already a minister and I, but I didn't know what direction I was going and it looked like a great business adventure and, and so I thought I'd give it a try and, and so uh, I, I, it was something that I, 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 I just felt like that would be the thing to do at the time and I sacrificed leaving my teaching year which took away those years and with this business adventure, it would give me a chance to do what I've always dreamed to be called to do. But the business closed up. And my mind went back Sunday night, this past Sunday night, and lost, I lost those precious years. And if I were teaching and not done that, to this day, this day I would be retired and I would be full-time as your pastor. I began to blame myself. I was sick and I was distraught. I fought and tossed and turned a Sunday night. And I began to blame myself and, and just begin to, to, to criticize myself. And uh, after preaching that great message, and uh, th- then I, th- I considered great because so many people responded to it and, and told me, said it, it, was, it was for me, it was for me. And then a man going to text me and do what he did. And another man, I didn't tell you about the other man, called and said, I, I, I saw that and said, I, you know, I need to get back in church. And, and it stirred me. I said, well, Lord, maybe, maybe it did something to somebody. But somehow the enemy was trying to attack my mind Sunday night. There were spirits that were getting a hold of me, and I tossed and turned all night, unable to sleep. And I cried out to the Lord, and I said, God, you see my heart. You see where I am. I need answers. 
I need answers. I said, God, I need answers tonight. Why, Lord, is there not growth? Why is the church not growing? Is it my fault, Lord? And I began to pray. And at 4 a.m., I got that text. And somebody did what they did. And because of that message, it stirred a backslider. And he said, your dad, your family, your music, your word. Here's what he said, is growing stronger in my heart and louder in my ears, even though I'm not where I need to be. Oh, Lord, help me. And the Lord spoke to my heart. I'm telling you, there's something going on here tonight. I don't know. I know it's a Wednesday night, and I'm trying to get through this because I know you got to go to work. I do too. But the Lord spoke to my heart, and I will never forget this past Sunday night for the rest of my life. Because when I said, Lord, I guess this is my fault. We're not growing. The Lord said, what are you talking about? I'm telling you, I heard it just as loud and clear as could be. Standing behind his pulpit, he said, what are you talking about? The church is growing. Did, and then the devil come back saying, is, is that God? You know how the devil works. Not, not, not in number, but in spirit. Yes, come on now. Amen. And then I get a call. And a brother that don't even know what's going on. I said, brother, let me ask you a quick question before we move on in this conversation. Did you listen to my message I preached yesterday? He said, where is it at? I mean, is it online? Is it? I said, okay, that's all I need to know. He said, brother, I got to tell you something. He said, you are growing. You have been growing. I said, oh, my gosh. Because the Lord had just spoke to me and said that. He said, what are you talking about? This church is growing. I said, okay, Lord. And then this man told me, he said, brother, I want to tell you something in the Holy Ghost. And boy, they say that. I love it. He said, your children, look where they're at today. Over the past seven years, they have grown up. They are now leading in ministry and music and youth and helping and trying to win people. And he just testified about how he wants to win souls and witnessing to people. And he's doing all this media stuff, the social media, and that's what he's majoring in. And I don't believe it's by chance that, that he, he's not doing this for the church. It's meant to be. It's a God thing. Because that's what he's going into. He will graduate, Lord willing, this May. Hallelujah. In social media, marketing. Praise the Lord. And that preacher said, brother, you have been growing. And he said, your children, look where they're at. They have grown up. It's been a season, brother. And he said, and you've got some members in there that have went through some things. They have went through trials. They have went through sickness. They have went through near-death experiences. They've had children that's had surgeries. They've had family that's been lost. And he said, you have been growing. Let me tell you something. I, I don't know how to say this, but i got to tell you something. If you don't believe or get a hold of God like you've never got a hold of him, let me tell you something, God will talk to you. Because I asked God, I said, God, I need an answer. And I was afraid the enemy said, you're going to have to wait a month. You're going to have to wait two months. You're going to have to wait. God gave me an answer Monday morning. And I'm going to tell you what the man told me, but most of all, what the man told me, we're growing. And I rebuke any spirit that says we're not. Quit looking at the past. Quit looking at what was back yesterday. Quit playing the blame game. Because I did it myself and I got rebuked. But I'm going to tell you in the Holy Ghost right now, everybody in here, you are growing. I'm going to tell you every person, don't let the enemy tell you you have nothing. Oh, I'm not doing what I need to do. I'm not doing what God... Let me tell you something. You are doing everything that you can do, but God's got something greater tonight. God's got something greater in your life. These young people over here, they're something greater. I'm telling you, Brother Ryan, 
I feel this in the Holy Ghost. I saw a vision. I saw Sister, Sister Molly, you're not going to believe this, but I saw you teaching in a classroom. I sure did. I, I, I got to move on. But he said, you're growing, brother. You're growing. I, I got a confirmation. I don't know if I will ever experience anything greater in my walk with God. I don't know. I don't want to say that because God is too great. He, he's done a lot of things. He gave some miracles. He healed my body. He's done things with my family. He's raised, he's, done, he's raised me up. He's done a lot of things. But I'm going to tell you, I'm so excited. I got I to gotta be careful because I, I just don't know what to I, I couldn't contain myself today. I couldn't contain myself today because I was so excited about the confirmation that God has given me. I'm addressing the church. You're growing. You're growing. I, I don't feel it. Well, you know what? Rebuke that spirit. You are growing. God's using and working in you. Woo! I, I, I had that man just before. I don't know what's going on Wednesday nights. I said, God, do something on Wednesday nights. And boy, he sure has. I'm telling you, Sister Barbara, that man, I mean, God used you last Wednesday night. Because that man called me the, the next night. And he said, he said, I'm telling you, he said, you, you're fixing to see a change. And he said, you, he said, you tell your kids, you tell your church. He said, there's new songs, new songs. They're going to sing new songs. Amen. They're going to write new songs. It's going to be new music. Amen. And he said, pass that mantle. And I'm passing it to him. Amen. I love it. And, and he said, and don't you quit writing. He done fussed at me. I said, I'm not. He said, don't you quit playing either. He said, I'm telling you the Holy Ghost. You keep playing. You keep singing. You keep worshiping. I, I know I'm a preacher, but I'm going to keep worshiping. That's me. I'm David. I got to worship. I got to praise him. Amen. One of, one of my preacher friends said, brother, I wish I could play and sing, you know. I'm so thankful that I could play and sing because I love worship. Yes. Yes. But you know what I love? I love worshiping with you. Yes. I tell you where a move of God is going to happen when everybody gets it together. Yes. 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 Amen. Amen. Praise God. Oh. Hallelujah. Look, look, look at who's with you tonight. Look beside you. Who's with you tonight? They're growing. They're with you. They're growing. But right, they're growing. Every time I stand over by them, they get t- I'm like, how you doing there? I, you know, I told Sister Molly Sunday, I said, what, I mean, Sister uh, Leslie said, what's your favorite drink? What's your favorite snack? She's like, uh, uh, you know, they're growing. But I'm not talking about that kind of growth. I, I'm talking about spiritual growth. I'm committed to doing everything I can to help prepare this church for the future. But I rebuke any funny dud spirits that don't want to do it. And I, I, I know, I, I appreciate some of the help and things you want to do. But it's got, we got to do things uh, that, that would be appeasing to God, first of all. But we need to have fun and enjoy life. It's like that little boy, he sparked this. He, he said, man, I, he got me all puffed up. I, I, I want, I'm almost saying Merry Christmas again. Hey, man, we, enjoy life. I enjoy life. I have fun. I, I, I love my home. I love my cats. I love my house. I love my little basketball going go every now and then. Hey, man, I love being able to be, be, you know, do what I want to do and enjoy life. Some people are like, I don't want to do all that. I just want to sing my little song and go over here. No, no, no. I want to have fun and enjoy and worship God. I got, I got on the Internet last night. We, we had an um, open house and, at our school, and I, I come home and I was tired and... Um, I, 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 when I went home, I clicked on the internet, and my my family, my my brother-in-law who pastors in Lawrenceburg, and my two nephews, they were preaching, and I just tuned in with them. Man, I just praise the Lord, you know. They had the little chat. They were like, "Praise God, praise God," you know. Brother Math, Matthew and Brother Michael, man, it just did my heart so good just to see them. They were little bitty things, and now they're preaching the gospel. Oh my goodness. 
Amen. Oh, my goodness. I just feel the Holy Ghost. I know they're not here. I know that. But maybe God's trying to prepare us because if they do come, our spirits might run them off. I don't want to do that. And I'm going to tell you, your pastor tell you, don't touch them, leave them alone, let me have them. Oh, Brother David, you're being ugly now. You're not letting me speak to it. No, I'm not doing that, but don't do anything that's going to discourage, damage, or put them down. I know they're not in church. And the Lord's changed my spirit in some things. I get mad and aggravated. Why ain't they in church? They're going through a lot of stuff. They need the Holy Ghost. They need baptism. They need all this stuff. And I'm going to tell you, we're going to win some people. I'm going to say it again. We are going to win some people through social media. I rebuke that spirit. We are going to win people through that. Don't tell me they're not watching. They're watching. They're not going to come in here until they watch and see what's going on first. And then they're going to come in. Let's be ready for them. Amen. And I'm going to tell you what, let's change the culture around here. When they come in, please eat them up with kindness. Please tell them, man, I'm glad you're here. Man, I'm so glad to see you, you know. And if they're not dressed right, if they're not doing right, if they're not living right, and they look, don't look a certain way, whatever, praise God, that's all right. God's going to take care of all of that. Yeah. Could I let my mom help me preach? We're going to. I know people don't like the C word. It's not Christ. It is Christ. But the C word is change. Amen. Hallelujah. I, I, I believe this. Everything is constantly changing around us, but this truth is not changing. Amen. This word is not changing. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. God says in Isaiah, see the former things I have taken place and new things I declare, amen, praise the Lord. The psalmist encourages us to sing the Lord a new song. Hey, I heard what Brother Poole said the other night, and I like what he said. Hey, we're going to sing the old songs. We're going to sing the hymns. We're going to do that, amen. But we're going to sing the new songs too, amen. And I know that's what they like. I like all of it. I don't care. I like it all, amen. But like Brother Poole said, don't sit down when they're singing the new songs. And he said, and you better shout when they sing your old songs, you know. Come on. We're worshiping. As early as the Garden of Eden, the God had to change, put change and put people on the move. And he came to Abraham and he said, you're moving. Pack up your things. Amen. Amen. We're growing. We're got, we got to move. We're move. God said, we got to go multiply the earth. So he told, he told Noah, get on the ark. We gotta, we're, we're growing. At the time he's building the ark, he said, this is what, I feel like Noah. Anybody, anybody feel like Noah? Noah was working on the ark. And the Lord said, it's going to rain, Lord. And the people were laughing, you're crazy, Noah. It's not going to rain. And he kept building the boat. What he was really doing was the Lord was saying, you're going to learn something from this. You're growing. How am I growing with this? Because when you get in that boat and you get on the other side, you're going to multiply and replenish the earth. You're going to grow. Hallelujah. Can I tell you, God's not slack concerning His promise. Now, there's a competition sometimes. Well, I'll tell you what, I pray. And i tell you what, I don't feel that. Let me tell you what, there's no competition in your God and my God. He's the same God. And the God I'm talking about tonight is a God that's in the right spirit. I will tell you, that God walking on the seashore of Galilee ain't, well, bless God. That's not the God I see. I see a compassionate God. I see a forgiving God. I see a loving God. I see a God that was like, would you back off right here and uh, don't forsake. And, and he rebuked the disciples, and he said, don't forsake these children right here. He said, let me talk to these children. You know, let me talk to them. But I think he also tried to teach us, too, we ought to be like a child. How pure in heart can a child be? How precious can a child be? Well, a girl that I taught last year, and she was a good student. Brother Ryan, she came, she came to my classroom with a baby. And she was home, and it was crying, wah, wah. And I was like, what in the world? She's in home ec, and she's 
training, you know, like how to take care of a baby, you know, later on. She didn't really have a baby. It was one of them fake babies. It was just crying. And uh, anyway, she walked out, and uh, the baby was crying. And, and I just got to thinking. I said, are you going to respond to that? And she said, oh, yeah. She was like trying to. <laughs> and you know what? The Lord hit me with something. It was like the Lord said, do you realize, I don't know if y'all can hear it or not. Did you know people are crying out there? And we're not responding? Yes. Yes. You say, Brother Dave, what do I do? We got to reach them somehow. We got to go after them. We got to somehow pray and seek them. And, 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 and I, I tell you, I, I'm just as guilty as the rest of I, I, I've got to sign, I, I got to somehow, somehow get a hold of them. Amen. And, and spend time with them. And, and let me tell you, I, I, I'm telling you as a pastor, when they get in, you can't tell them all the things they can't do. They will not come back. <laughs> They're not coming back. Why would you? I wouldn't want to come back either if you tell them how bad they are and what they look like and, how, and all this stuff. Let me tell you something. You can't do that. Hey, how, what were you like when you first came to the Lord, you know? Amen. We all, we all have sinned and failed to come short of the glory of the Lord. But thank God he, he cleansed us. He saved us. Praise the Lord. I, we, we're growing. We're growing. Well, Brother David, we need to do this. We need to do that. We need to do this. We need to do that. Yeah, we do. We sure do. But you know what? The first thing we need to do for any growth take place, or, any, or we do any extra, do any stuff, is get in tune with God. Just have a spirit of just like what we're feeling, what I'm feeling right now. Amen. Just uh, an atmosphere. I, I tell you, I, I just don't know how to exp- express the feeling that I get when we come together and goodness and excitement. And, 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 and you know what? I am looking forward. I'm looking forward to this year. I'm excited. I, I'm sorry to keep bringing it up. I hope there's no Scrooges in the house. But I'm looking forward to Christmas this year. Because I believe there's going to be a whole bunch of people here singing joy to the world. I'm looking forward to trunk or treat. Filling up them trunks with candy. And there's no telling what Brother Red will be wearing that night. I don't know. I'm looking forward to it. Because there's going to be a bunch of kids running around. Excited up. Maybe, maybe, maybe it's going to be some of your kids filled with the Holy Ghost, baptized in Jesus' name. Running around, look at that. And they're just excited. I can't wait. I sound like my dad. Come on. It's good. I can't wait. It's going to be a good, uh, like Brother Jess Lee Kill's word, we're having a good time. Praise the Lord. You're growing. You're growing. I'm going to tell you how you're growing. You're growing in this word. And I hope you're listening to what pastor says. If it's something somebody don't like, well, you know what? I hope you'll pray about this because this is the way pastor is going to be. And this is the way I feel. And as we move forward, this is the way it's going to be. We're going to have church. Amen. We're going to have church. We're going to have quality church. A lot of people want quantity, but I want quality. Amen. It's going to be quality. But I need your help. I need your help. I need you to pray. I need you to pray. We're going to have good church Sunday. We are going to have good church Sunday. And you know what? First of all, Brother Red and Sister, uh, uh, I, I'm, telling, I'm telling you something now. They already back there, Sister Debbie and Brother Red, they've been inviting people all day today, yesterday, to church. We're going to have good church, but you know what we're going to do? I need your help. We need to pray. You say, Brother David, how do I pray? You say, God, first of all, bless my pastor. Just give him a word. But God, send the anointing in this place. Amen. It, it, I, I pray that I sing your favorite song, but if it's not, please just pray that the anointing and the flow would just be there because what it's all about. Souls, anyway. Amen. But I pray that the Holy Ghost move in this place and somebody would receive life. Praise the Lord. I'm going to tell you what. He's got a job to do. He's going to put it out there. Pump it, pump it, pump it. i tell you what I did. I got on there. I, I just messaged people. People ranting. I'm messaging. I'm praising. I'm ranting. Yeah, they're ranting for all that stuff. And I, I get so sick of that. Come on. Praise him. Magnify the Lord. Message somebody. Why don't we use social media for what it's worth? 
You know, don't go, brother, brother Carpenter said it best. He said, you know what that little thing says? What's on your mind? That's what the problem. Don't tell them what's on your mind. Represent the church. Represent God. Tell them about Jesus. Come on, tell them about the goodness of the Lord. But we need to pray. If you can fast, hey, fast, fast. Let's see a move of God. Man, I'm so excited. I don't know what to do. Man, I believe I could run a mile. Praise the Lord. Y'all take the car. I'll run home, you know. Praise the Lord. I'm excited because God has confirmed some stuff to me. Amen. I tell you what, that's how the devil works. Sunday night, he tried to make me feel like I didn't know what I was doing. And I, didn't, I, I, I was just nothing. But I tell you what, when God gets a hold of you, things will change. And I tell you what, I've learned this early in my life, and this is a quick Bible study. If things are going wrong and people won't get with it and they won't do you right, pray for them. Because two things will happen. They'll change or either you'll rise above them. And that's what I've done. I've, I've, I've just had to, I've had to take flight on some things. I, I'm going to tell you something. I'm preaching here tonight, but there's been people who just told me, said, I hope that church fails. That's terrible. I would never tell anybody that. I don't care what denomination you are. I would never say that. And I pray that God would just save their soul and forgive them. And I forgive them. I said, God, forgive them. I don't know why they would say that. Why would you want this church to fail? Why? Well, the devil wants to destroy anything that he can. Uh, lift up your hand. You're growing. Come on, you're growing. My God. Lord, I feel the Holy Ghost. You're growing tonight. God, I claim it tonight in Jesus' name. I claim it in Jesus' name. Woo! In the name of Jesus. I, I, I believe somebody's growing strong. You're growing in, in, in faith tonight. Somebody's growing in health tonight because you put your hope and trust in God. Thanks for joining us for this episode. We pray that it blessed you. If you're watching on YouTube, be sure to like and subscribe to our channel or submit some positive feedback on your favorite podcast app and share it with a friend. God bless in Jesus' name.